My name is Aminda and I run a small business called Aminda Creatives. I've always had pets. I grew up with some smaller dogs and now we have Buddy and Liberty who are my German Shepherds and Minnow who is a little tuxedo cat. I sell a lot of different things. I do handmade items. I make dog bandanas, collars, leashes, treat jars, anything really for pets, uh, dogs and cats mainly. And I also do wholesale items. So I have a wholesale license where I purchase things such as pre-made uh, resale goods like treats and toys and things of that nature. I sell my products mainly at the Town Peddler in Livonia, Michigan on Plymouth Road. I have a booth there. And then I also do around the holidays, like November and December, I do some craft fairs and selling like one day at a time. Growing up, my mom was actually an artist. She has a degree in art and she had a quilt shop when I was younger. Her and my grandma owned it together. So I've always kind of been around her art and her creating quilts and things out of fabric. So I did a lot of that. I learned to sew when I was very young and my mom bought me a sewing machine when I was probably six or seven years old. I was also an only child who lived kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so my mom and I would go out and get leaves and sticks and rocks and make art projects at home from things we found online and that we were always doing something creative. My dad also owned a car lot when I was young. So both of my parents were entrepreneurs. It's always been something I've been interested in. So starting off with something small like my craft business is just something that I can do on the side while I kind of figure out, you know, if I want to do something bigger with entrepreneurship in the future. Before I started Aminda Creatives, I was a student. I've been going to school for a while. After I got my undergrad in psychology, I then went on to get my master's degree in social work from Michigan State. And that's what I'm practicing now. I'm currently a substance use disorder counselor. But art has, and creating things has always been a part of my life. So I was always doing like side hobbies and making things like that as I was going to school for something completely different. And then I decided to make it a business. I have a craft room at home that was kind of just building up with items. So I'm always making things and it just almost became a storage issue, <laughs> especially during quarantine when everybody's at home. If you're not going out, I was making more and more. The town peddler was still thriving. They were still selling a lot. They were doing online sales. And by the time I got my booth there, they were reopened fully to the public. My first month, I don't think I paid off my booth rent. I started in November of 2020. November was a little shaky, but Christmas holidays are always fantastic. As soon as December hit, it was really great. I was in a booth that was a little bit further from the entrance. Not a lot of people like walked by it all the time. So after Christmas kind of died down the holiday buying season, I stopped making enough money to cover the rent for a while. I then moved up to a like front row kind of prime real estate spot. And I have for the past year, I've been making enough in that booth to equal what I was making around Christmas time in my old booth. So I'm really excited for Christmas this year to see what happens. It's really fun to be able to just do whatever I want with it. I have my theme, my pets, but within pets, I can decide if I want to paint, if I want to use my Cricut machine. I can do things with fabric and make the bandanas and the collars and leashes. I like to explore with a lot of different mediums and textiles to create things. And being able to choose a theme that's so broad, like pet related items, I can kind of do with that what I want. My favorite thing that I hand make are my bandanas. It's really fun to go to the store and pick out the different 
patterns of fabric to go on dogs and sometimes people want them for their cats. I had people, some lady ask me if I could make them small enough to put on her guinea pigs. So that was interesting. <laughs> The most challenging part about having my own business is definitely just finding the motivation sometimes to get home from a full day of work and then work on my small business. So I'm still working full time as a social worker. So I work weird hours. I go to work at 6 a.m. I get home around 3 p.m. I'm tired. I've been up, you know, since 4.30 in the morning. And then I have to talk myself into creating things that I can then sell. So it's almost like a second job, but it does have the flexibility of, you know, if I'm tired today, I can do it tomorrow. But then it's just finding the motivation to not keep saying that each day. <laughs> So I've thought about where my business could go in the future and maybe like an end goal for it. I would love to see kind of all of my passions come together. That would be something like utilizing social work with creativity, opening up a shop that, you know, people who needed help finding a job or needed some kind of skill training would be able to come and learn how to make things and become like a small business entrepreneur themselves. That's something I would love to be able to explore a little bit more. The advice I would give someone that wants to start their own small business would be to just start because you can plan and you can have all these ideas. Like I took weeks, literally weeks to pick a name for my business. I was on name generators for, you know, brand logos and all this crazy stuff. Finally, you just have to decide on something. You just have to do it and yeah, just jump in. <laughs>